Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the Cornerstone Builder. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to create simple, native, single page navigations that can be managed on a page by page basis versus needing to create separate header navigations for our site. Now I know that sounds like a mouthful, so I am gonna walk you through this from step one. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are in the Cornerstone Builder, and as you can see, I have a coffee site set up here, and I have my homepage, which I just want a very simple navigation, a global navigation like this here, where I can go from my homepage to my coffee page, to my latte page, and to my cappuccino page. But if we go ahead and look at this on the front end of the website, when I go to the coffee page, which is this page here, I have some sections that I'd like to scroll down to. So I'd like there to be a sub navigation here specifically for this one page. But then I also want the same thing for this latte page. And I might have different sections or maybe they're different section names. And then I have my third page, which is my cappuccino page, which might have different section names, a different number of sections, etc. Now, typically for a navigation inside a cornerstone here, we would simply come into our header builder, which is what we have here where our global navigation is. and we could simply add a bar and then we could add items inside of this bar. We could add buttons or we could add an actual navigation element. So you could add something like this down here, or if we wanted them to be buttons, we could come in here and type in button and we could add some buttons and then we could add these as anchor links. Maybe this is section one and this will go to section dash one. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate this and we'll call this one over here, section two, and we'll give it the name section two and then obviously we want these to be a little closer together than they are so maybe we will set this instead of space between we'll set this to end with one m of horizontal gapping in there and okay that's looking pretty good but now this is a global navigation so if i save this and i go back out to my site now i have section one and section two on every single page and this is great but not every page on my site requires anchor links and as you recall my coffee page might have different links than my latte page that has different links than my cappuccino page so this doesn't really work for me now i could go into my header navigation where i've created this sub nav and i could call this navigation our coffee navigation and then we could come into our settings and create conditions that specify that this only shows up on a specific page and that specific page is our coffee page. And then I could create another navigation like this and specify that that one's for lattes. And then I could create another one and specify that that one's for cappuccinos, but then I'd have to create another one and specify that that one is for the global site. So all of the other pages on the site. And then if I create another drink page, let's say I create a cold brew page, I then need to create another global navigation and it can become a header management nightmare instead of going this route. So let's go ahead and just call this our global navigation again. And we'll make sure that the assignment is set to our entire site here. So it's across the board and we'll get rid of that sub nav that we made there. So what are we going to do? Well, first, before we do anything, we're going to take a measurement. So our bar here that we have is 100 pixels in height. And we want to know that number because that's going to help us as we set up our sub nav on the individual pages. Now let's jump to our first page. So rather than doing it in the global navigation, we are going to build out our sub navigation directly on the page, but have it function as if it is part of the global navigation. And this just makes it much easier for us to control on the page level, especially because the links that we're going to include in here are simple anchor links that just take us to on page destinations. So the first thing that we're going to do is look in our outline over here where we have each of our sections built. And we're going to come right up to the top above section one. We're going to hover where it says add section. And I'm going to hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key. And that'll allow us to add an element instead of a section. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, what I want to add is a div element. And this immediately is going to add a div to the top of our document here. Now, within this div, let's go ahead and click on it to inspect it. We want to do a couple of things. We're going to scroll down to where we have position. And instead of relative, we actually want this to be position sticky. So we'll go ahead and set that to sticky. And then we also know that our space for our global header is 100 pixels high. So we want this sticky offset on the top to be 100 pixels. 
And then we're gonna scroll back up to where we have our Z index set to auto. And we wanna make sure that this is a Z index that is as high as our navigation up at the top. So maybe something like 99999. Now, one other thing, just so we can kind of see what's taking shape here, let's go ahead and just set a background color of white. Now, if I come over to our document and I scroll, we can see that that div is staying put. So now let's start building out some content in there. Now I want this sub navigation to sort of match our global container that we have in our global nav up top. So here's what I'm gonna do. Inside of this div that we just created, let's go ahead and call this our on page navigation bar. So this is the on page navigation bar container. Now within this container, let's go ahead and add an element and we're going to add another div. But for this div, we are going to choose our global margin, which simply means that its controls are set to global container. And with that done, you'll notice that it lines up perfectly with our logo on the left side and with our links on the right side. Now within this div, we'll go ahead and call this our links div we're gonna go ahead and add some formatting. First and foremost, I'm gonna add just a little bit of top and bottom padding. Let's go ahead and just call that 20 pixels top and bottom, but obviously you could style that as you see fit. And then we're gonna come into our Flexbox here. We'll enable Flexbox. We'll set our direction to row. We'll set our gap to 1M, and we're going to set our horizontal positioning to end. And what that does is just make sure that everything that we put inside of this div is right justified. So when we add our links or our buttons, it's all gonna be on the right hand side. Now, the element that I'm gonna throw in here is just gonna be a simple button element. You could do this with an inline navigation and then manage the menu items from the back end of WordPress, but I think this is just easy and straightforward here. So we have our first button. Let's go ahead and just very quick style this we'll get rid of the button styles we'll get rid of our padding we'll get rid of our border radius we'll get rid of our box shadow we'll call this overview it'll be our first section which will be this top section here we'll give it a little bit of styling maybe it is uh, this color as our base and I don't know let's just pick something a little brighter when it is in its interaction state and then we'll go ahead and choose just some sort of anchor link here we'll call this overview and then we simply need to make sure that that anchor link matches wherever we want it to go so I want that to go to section two here so we'll go into customize and under ID we'll type in overview so now those match now let's go ahead and click on that button and we'll duplicate it i don't know four or five times how many sections do we have we have four sections so we'll duplicate it five times one two three four five this one we'll call section one and we'll give it an anchor link of section dash one just to keep things easy we'll call this one section two and we'll give it an anchor link of section two and so on and so forth now with all of that set up in our little navigation up here, let's go into each one of our sections. So we have section one, we'll click customize and we'll add section dash one, ensuring that this ID matches whatever our anchor link is. We'll go to section two and we'll type in section dash two. We'll go into section three and so on and so forth. All right. That's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and view this on the front end. And here we have our coffee page and we have section one. And you'll notice it's in an active state while I'm in section one. I can go to section two, section three, section four, and back to our overview section here. You'll also notice as I scroll through, section one highlights, section two highlights, section three highlights, and section four highlights. Now, let's say I wanna use this on another page. Well, it's pretty easy. All I have to do is either save this design into my components where I could reuse it over and over again. But for the sake of ease and example here, we're simply going to save this as a template. So we'll come in here, we'll click customize, and under our templates here, we'll click save template, and we'll call this single page nav and save. Now we're gonna jump over to our cappuccino page and pretty much everything is taken care of. We'll just come up here to our add section, hold down the command or the control key, click add element and search for single page nav. We'll go ahead and add that in. Here's our nav. And now on the page, we can simply change this to match. Maybe this one says cappuccino. This one says section one, two, three, and so on. Then I could come in here and change this to 
overview and again make sure all of these match now for my example here these are all consistent but obviously if these sections differed in names and types you could see how something like this could be really useful so we'll come in here and call this section one section two section three and section four and that's looking pretty good let's jump over to our latte page here and we'll do the same thing now we've been able to manage this on a page by page basis so let's say for example we wanted this navigation to match these colors we could simply come in here and i don't have these set up as global colors so we'll simply grab this here come up to our latte and we can change out those colors obviously you'd want to make sure these have enough contrast to actually be legible here but for the sake of example this works so we'll come in here and change each one of these for latte uh, and then we could do the same if we wanted to for cappuccino here so we could come in here and grab whatever this green color is that we're using here and we could add that across the board as well then we'll simply copy that and paste our styles across the board so now with all of that done you can see how easy that is to manage on the page level as opposed to having to manage different global navigations up at the top we can simply come in here and we'll refresh and we have our home page which does not have a sub navigation at all then we go into our coffee page and we have section one two three four an overview we go into our latte page and we have different colors here latte overview section one two three four and back to our overview and then we have our cappuccino page again with different colors here and we have section one two three four and our overview now one other item to note for our sticky navigation currently we simply have this set up as a div but if you wanted to add some proper semantic structure here since this technically is a form of navigation you could click on this div and instead of having an html tag of div you could set this to an html tag of nav here just to specify that there is a navigation inside of this as well as always i hope you guys find these videos useful i look forward to seeing how you guys use these in your designs and i will see you guys in the next video happy building